Yo, what's good, everybody? I've got Spirited Blades, aka Spirit Spirited Whiskey, aka Knife Customs, Custom Knife Expert, not Knife Customs, like you're stopping TSA or something like that. But yeah, thank you for doing the show, man. Cheers to you. Oh, they lagged for a second, and we're back. Oh, okay. Are we good now? Yep. I heard. I heard most of that. Um, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I fumbled the words a lot, so I'm glad that you didn't hear all of it. But thank you for doing the show, man. Uh, Metal Complex suggested to have you on. Uh, I watched you on that Neves Knives video where you were like in the park with Jared, and Jared's a good buddy of mine. And sure. I was like, "Yo, who is this guy?" You know, what I'm uh, one one thing I'm going to ask you right now because I've got ADHD and my mind goes like this: Why yep. do you, when you're testing the drop shuttiness? of a knife, right? Why do you do yes. that instead of the shake like most people? Um, I don't, I don't know, but you, you do honestly, this, you like, like, yeah. Like that? That's, yeah. You know, like you, you kind of like do a, you force it a little. Yeah. I don't know. I guess. I mean, I could just shimmy, you yeah. know? Yeah. I, I could, I could do, oh, my, my background is, uh, <laughs> Is the background making all the this disappear? Um, a little bit sometimes. It it kind of. I'm gonna have to like, turn it off. Hang on yeah, a second. Yeah, that sucks, man. What's in the back there before you turn it off? What knife is that? Um, it's a a pair of Jonas Iglesias's that I have. Damn. Um, <laughs> one of them is uh, is this. Wow. Mini Bowie. That's so sick. So it's yeah, it's kind of weird. It makes it disappear. It's like a green screen. <laughs> yeah, you're and the second not... person who's done a green screen on the show. Um, my homie from a podcast called Negro Jump. They're uh, these black dudes that talk about anime and movies. He was like basically pulling out drinks out of Miss Incredible's ass. Like that was his background. <laughs> it was it was like you know the Mrs. Incredible. I forgot her name. Elastigirl Girl or whatever. And he was like <laughs> pulling it out of her. Ass. It's so funny, Don't but uh, me. I'm, I'm bobbing and weaving so you can see it. No, <laughs> um, so on top is a, a Jonas Iglesias lichen, and on the bottom is a Jonas Iglesias mini Bowie. And I'll show you those in a second. Yeah. Let me just get rid of this. It, so I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you know let you in on a little secret. Like I know nothing about the custom world, and um, it's always interested me. Uh, but I just that's not the range that I play in. You know, the most expensive knife that I bought, uh, which was the knife that solidified me being in this hobby, was the yep. Sandra Knives Clemente one, the very first one. That was the tungsten sure. carbide blade with titanium scales and tungsten carbide inlay. It was a folder, right? Okay. That was $995. Yeah. And um, yeah. the only reason why I bought that is um, at that time, my pops just passed away and his name is Clemente also. Sure. Which is kind of strange to have this connection with an Italian knife company. And I'm Filipino, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. I took it as a sign for me to like, you know, save money and, and, and buy sure. it. And I, and I did, dude. So, but that's the most expensive thing I've ever bought, man. Um, let's yeah. go back yeah. a little bit. Like, how did you get into like the knife hobby? Like, what was your introduction to it? Um, so I guess what, what originally got me into it was, uh, was twofold. Um, Firstly, I, I grew up, um, you know, a, a Boy Scout and grew up, my old man was owned an electrical contracting company uh, growing up. And so I was always around learning how to do things with my hands um, nice. from him, taking apart vacuum cleaners, putting them back together, you know, working with literally wiring and, and stuff like that, that he would teach me at a young age. So I was always around you know, knives for utility purposes in that way. Um, and, and as a hobby, you know, building things and tinkering and, and stuff like that. Um, aside from that, uh, I spent probably through my mid, I guess through my mid to late twenties, I spent as much time in the city as I did in the, in the actual wilderness. Oh, um, I, I spent, <laughs> I spent probably um, three months out of every year um, in in the summer in Bemidji, Minnesota, way up by the Canadian border by International Falls area in the Boundary Waters and learning how to whitewater canoe and kayak and, and uh, outdoor living skills and that kind of stuff. And, so and then the older I got, 
you know, I would travel and, and do larger, longer backpacking and whitewater trips with a group of friends that I grew up with. Uh, my longest trip was a 52 day backpacking trip of the Continental wow. Divide Trail. And so, you know, spending that much time in the outdoors and, and um, you know, climbing mountains and, you know, and, and all that kind of stuff, it really taught me a whole other side of, of using tools that, you know, out of necessity for um, outdoor living. Mm -hmm. so you know I think it was a combination of things and I always respected the fact that when I was little my dad carried a pocket knife and you know and then um, the necessity out of using them and then fundamentally learning how to survive in the environment with you know not a whole lot um, you know means to water means to basic means to rehydrate food and uh, and and then you know a knife to create fire and that's really you know all you really need out there um, mm -hmm. once you learn your environment and, and learn how to survive in it. And so I always had a fascination, you know, with it um, from a young age. Past that, you know, I was really just tinkering around with uh, with Benchmades when Benchmade first got started in the as Benchmade and and with Spiderco and and you know all of that stuff um, and in productions. I didn't spend a whole lot of time with slip joints besides, you know, very early on when I was learning with them with Cub Scouts and, and that kind of stuff, learning, you know, knife safety. Um, but I quickly went into, you know, owning things like the Buck 110 and, uh, and a whole bunch of, uh, yeah, I had my, I think my first knife was probably a, Cam a Camelus or Camillus. Yeah, Camillus. Yes. You know, um, from there, though, I immediately was, was into Victorinox. You know, always had a, a, um, a Victorinox classic on my key ring and a cadet probably on hand or something like that. Or, and then, uh, and then I would always have, you know, at that time it was old school bench made, you know, um, got into a couple of those and from there it kind of trickle affected. And I, I got into customs probably, gosh, 10, probably about, you know, 10, eight, 10 years ago. Did you get into mid techs before that, or did you just transition kind of right into it? Like, how did that happen? Um, you know, mid techs were mid techs were around, right? Like the 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 hand tuning from some makers were around, but not nearly as much as they are now, right? Mid techs were not much of a of a of a thing unless you would call a Chris Reeves Sabenza. I had those back in you know mm -hmm. a long time ago as well. And, you know, I guess that would be kind of considered at that time a mid-tech, you know, mm -hmm. kind of. Um, now they're really productions. Yeah. You know, um, high-tier production. But, uh, yeah, so I, I did own a Sabenza, truly fell in love with, you know, with Chris Reeve knives. And then from there, I, I went down a whole other rabbit hole. I found Dave <laughs> Curtis. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I found... Um, just a, a heap of guys, Bob Terzwola and Tom Mayo and, um, you know, a lot of who we refer to now as, you know, the OGs, the, the classic makers um, that many of which are still around today um, making knives. Yeah. Um, and I still and I still collect them and, and some of them are my absolute favorites. So, um, yeah, that's crazy. How, how much do you think you spend on knives a month? Oh, Jesus, I have I, I have no idea. Um, it varies, you know, yeah. I think, you know, I think, uh, let's put it this way right now, I've got probably six or seven things in the till that'll probably be landing over the next yeah, four weeks over the next month. And, and, you know, and that those seven pieces will probably be, eight, um, eight grand plus. Whoa. Probably. That's, that's like, that's crazy, bro. That, but I mean, it's I, it's yeah. just a different world when you, I mm -hmm. mean, and it's wild because it's, they're functional for me. I carry them daily if I don't, you know, and some of them I, I love to look at and, and just hang out with and flip mm -hmm. while I'm at my house. Yeah. I mean, let's yeah. face it, we're all, we're all in a pandemic right now, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I'm about to have a, a, become a dad for the first time. And a lot of this stuff is going to slow down you know, because of that, right. Yeah. Just because being a dad is going to be number one, but you know, I'm working from home primarily. Um, and, uh, my work, um, is outstanding. I'm in the booze business as you know, I, I distribute booze That's for a amazing. living. 
<laughs> yeah, so. knives and booze, dude. That's the best, man. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. So you know, I'm uh, basically I've lived my life as a sommelier and cicerone, and booze has paid my bills for 20 years, and um, and you know now I'm fortunate enough that um, you know I I basically you know sell spirits to the largest independent retailer here in Illinois, and it's Damn. really it's it's spectacular, and people are drinking right now, and thank yeah. you everybody. I'll raise, uh, I'll raise my whiskey, you know, to, to all of you. But, um, so yeah, I get to deal with all the private barrel whiskeys and all the, you know, rare scotches, rare whiskeys, all the allocated stuff, and then all the cool mezcals and, you know, unique and more niche, you know, spirits out there. And it's a, it's a great gig, but that's allowed me to be home and uh and spend time talking to makers and mm-hmm. a little bit here and there between you know my work and stuff and um you know so i guess you start talking to everybody and you become yeah. friends with all these makers yeah. and stuff and then things come together and and you wind up like this will be cool no this will be cool and i have an idea and i really want to do this and yeah and then the maker gets excited about it and you're excited about it and then you're off to the races building something really special and um, and then the product of that and the experience of that is really what's continued to drive my ambition to, you know, continue, continue forward and try new makers and try new stuff and everybody evolves and it's really cool. That's amazing, man. You know, I was going to ask you since uh, when we were chatting on Instagram, um, you were like, yeah, man, I just, you know, made some homies and this small group of makers and, and enthusiasts. Yep. And um, I found that very interesting uh, watching you on uh, Neves and Ives channel and now talking to you now um, really makes me think like, man, why isn't this guy an even bigger like force in the community? Because you, you certainly like have the personality chops to be like kind of this, you know, big online personality, like a Shabazz or, or even like complex sure. or something like that. Um, sure. Very easy to talk to. Um, you're very clear about how you talk about knives. I don't know shit about knives. I've been in this hobby for, I want to say four years. The channel has yeah. been up for a little under the four years. And I definitely check out more knives than the average person because sure. I get a lot of loners. I get a lot of donations. I'm part of a few pass arounds and um, yeah. But I feel like I don't know anything. Like when I was watching you on Neve's Knives, I was like, I do not talk like that. You know what I mean? But I, I'm super like, <laughs> like I'm super interested and I'm, I, I, I want to get cool with people like that. You know, sure. um, yeah. I, 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 I look at like, not, I mean, this is what I'm doing, really. Like exactly what you're doing right now. Sure. This is what I do with my knives the most. I'm in New York City. I'm not. Yep bush crafting i call it city I'm crafting in Chicago, if, dude. I'm, if it yeah so like th- this is what i do the most and i cut cardboard so it's really yep. of um aesthetics ergonomics and yep. action is what yep. i pay attention to the most right if does it look good to me does it make me feel a certain sort of way when i when i look at it uh how does it feel um like for example i've been carrying the the ivy by um ostop hell uh from best tech and yep. i i love it but carrying it for the past three days like my thumb is so sore sure right from like just doing this sure. and uh you know that gets a little bit a couple of points off for me because if i carried like the the mini smoke for a little bit like i don't get that so those totally. are the things that i notice right um now uh how do you go about like purchasing something like do you just see a custom maker like put out something like an idea or like did they hit you up and say like hey dude uh this is what i'm thinking about doing like do you want to get in on this sure so i you know i gotta rewind and go back to what you were saying at, at kind of at the beginning there yeah, which is it. you know how you kind of diagnose and how you play around and use yeah. knives and stuff and and then listening to how i speak about it with mm-hmm. or spoke about knives with neves yeah. and stuff yeah. right yeah. and i did some videos going over even but his budget stuff right yeah and, yeah I, I, I love that dude i love that so much so you know and um it's interesting because as as what i do professionally right um is try and to use my deductive abilities to try and figure out the nuances that make something innately unique, right? So um, whether that is, you know, as a sommelier, a wine expert, or as a Cicerone, a beer expert, mm-hmm. or as a, you know, in, in spirits, when I've, you know, when I'm going to hand select a barrel of whiskey, and I've selected hundreds and hundreds, thousands, uh, quite close to a thousand barrels 
of private selected whiskey at this point wow. or, or blending whiskey. I, when I go and I think about those, I diagnose the intricacies, the details of, of the nuance of it. Um, you know, what does it look like? What does it, what does it smell like? What does it taste like? How does it, you know, how does it, does it invoke a memory? Does it invoke, um, you know, um, and a lot of times it will, it'll invoke mm -hmm. a memory of my youth. If I, you know, if I, yeah. if I bit it in a Creek and I got a mouthful of muddy Creek water, yeah. you know, I know, <laughs> and there's a memory of that in my head. Right. And so the diagnosing the nuance and what I do for a living goes into kind of, and part of the reason I think that I'm able to truly appreciate the artisan, the craftsman in this kind of custom work is because of that intricacy, right? The level of detail, um, you know, so I, and that's what I think about. I think about, you know, the detail exactly, you know, how, how, how was this built and what was the frame, the frame of reference that the maker was thinking about in making this product and, and then diagnosing it from, you know, heel to tip or whatever from there. Um, and how do I go about, you know, getting knives, um, there's a number of ways, right? Like one that just happened today was wingman EDC. That is not a custom. It's, you, sent me you know, some, yeah, exactly. Notes. So I filled out a lotto for a, a run of Chad Nichols, dark tie, um, limited run. They made 30 pieces of them and, uh, I'm excited to get it. And I won that lotto, right. Other, other times it might be on, uh, Instagram where a maker is doing a lotto like Cody, Cody Utzler, uh, for instance, who does the duck and the duckling or David Mosier. I'm holding one of David's pieces up here. This is his, um, steadfast model. Wow. Um, and you know, he's one of the OGs he's been in this making wow. knives since the, since the mid nineties. <laughs> but, um, you know, at any rate, you know, with, with his stuff, it's all first come first serve, you know, as, wow. and you see him like, start building and I'll take some pictures of, of the grind being done or, you know, the, the raw handle materials before he contours everything and you name it. And, uh, and then I'll reach out to the maker. I'll just send him a message. Like these yeah. are just people, you know, but send him a message and just say, Hey, beautiful piece. Or do you have any, any idea when you think it might be going live? Or are you going to do a lotto with it or whatever? Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll either go in on the lotto. I'll do a first come first serve. Um, or I'll give the maker feedback on what I think about that individual model, you know, without being a prick. <laughs> yeah. So they, and, do they just know of you? So like, they're like, they take your input um, more seriously than a person that they don't know. Like, are you, cause you're yeah. just embedded in that community or. Um, and no one. Yes. I mean, some guys who are younger or trying to gain uh, more of a following or whatever might heed some advice or input. Um, you know, what I do is I build brands and, in, and, in, in the, for work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some of what I do there also translates into some of these custom makers yeah. and giving them some feedback or ideas of how they can go, you know, create a go-to-market strategy and, be successful with a particular design or what might appeal to people after seeing, you know, this community that I've got multiple chat groups and stuff yeah. with knife collectors, you know, seeing what they're into and what excites a whole group of people. And I digest that. I think about it and I can regurgitate, you know, some of that and my opinions and it varies. Yeah. I mean, some of these OG guys are just OG, like Tom Mayo, there, there's no discussion I'm going to have with Tom Mayo that Dang. gives him input, right? Like this dude. Wow, is, that sounds so amazing. That was so smooth. Oh, it's dude. This, is, this dude is the beautiful man. So mosaic pins, damascus steel what? blade. It's got mosaic thumb studs. Um, I mean, this thing is as good. I mean, it's just wow. Oh. As the young kids say, the customs do be hitting different, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yo. I don't say that, by the way. I, I'm on TikTok, so I, like, try to keep up with all these things that kids say, and uh, definitely that's what that is. Damn, how much does that run, dude? Um, this is one of the pricier pieces in, in my collection, for sure. This is called the Mayo, Mayo Retro Model. Um, and this is wow. a dressier one with damascus steel blade. And I mean, this guy invented the hand rub satin finish, right? Like Damn. that's Tom Mayo is one of the greats. Everything he does is from hand. There is no CNC. There is no water jetting there. And he, his grinds are done freehand and they're perfectly that's symmetrical. Crazy. 
you know, his plunges are perfectly symmetrical. Um, it's just simplicity done perfectly. And this piece is right around close to three grand. Damn, dude. So, you know, this, yeah, oh, about 20, 2,800 to 3,000 bucks is probably Damn. where you're at on this. But it's a, this is a special piece. Yeah. And, uh, but I'll, I'll carry it for special, you know, special occasions and stuff like that. And I, I really love it. Um, but that's a, do that's you, a do you carry like your stuff. You said, you told me that you, you do care if you, if, you, if it doesn't get pocket time, you're just going to like, you know, it's going to be in and out of the collection. Right. It doesn't so you get do pocket carry time. Your stuff. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah. Um, wow, let's see if I dude. can, let's see if I can get enough of the, let me close my other, I got my computer in front of me. Hang on. Mm-hmm. see if i can get this close enough that you can see it. i've got yeah. quite a bit of use on this finish yeah i see right? i definitely see some marks there yeah um you know and i use the hell out of this and this is probably one of the favorite knives of my entire collection Damn. um this is a christensen uh, matt christensen is the maker christensen knifeworks mm-hmm. um you've probably seen some of his models uh being done with alliance designs and the banger ring um you might have seen mm-hmm. he's got a new one coming out with we called the thug um that'll be dropping really soon that's badass this model's called the misfit um wow. and this was uh just a brainchild of mine and he and i like a similar you know aesthetic mm-hmm. um and to me od micarta and zirconium is just an awesome Dang. awesome look um he does an ass uh, he does a he bead blasts this blade and then mm-hmm. does an acid hand rub over top of it um, so it just has a really beautiful that looks great finish um, and then that's zirconium and the underlays you can see Damn. how it beautifully reflects the light that's like a pocket inside of the titanium where that <laughs> sits and then it's got a really badass milled zirconium floating backspacer in there that looks so cool zirk clip zirk collars you name it and this thing's, uh, I mean, it's, it's just beautiful. And you ask why I do that motion. I yeah, guess because I, I think it's, customs it's just, just, just go down like that. But for example, if, you know, like I, I'm not going to be able like this one, I'm just going to be forcing it to go down. You know uh, what I'm yeah. saying? I think, I think with a custom, you could just, yeah. No, you, no, yeah it's, it, it, well, it, it just, it, no, not necessarily. A lot of guys um, tune their stuff different ways. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of custom makers don't like free dropping stuff. Like, I'll give you an example. Mm-hmm. Jonas Iglesias is, in yeah. my opinion, one of the top three makers out there today. This That's is that beautiful. mini, this is that mini Bowie. I could see it. Um, <laughs> and it's got, yeah, it's a Tonto, but it's got a, that Bowie, beautiful yep, yep. Bowie drop. So this is um, rich light handles and zirconium accents. Um, rich light, he bead blasts the top of rich light. Rich light is kind of like a modern age micarta. It's wow. used mostly for guitar fretboards, cool. um, but it's really awesome stuff. But this uh, is an incredibly thin liner lock. Yeah. Like you can see how skinny he, mm-hmm. he gets those scales. Yeah. The contours, but there, there's no way I'm going to free drop this. It'll stop. Right. Yeah. So, you know, but as I close this, if you look, it is like silk on silk yeah. on it's yep. like glass meeting glass. Yeah, I could even I could see it even from the screen. So smooth. so, but there's no way I can swing it. I can give it a like a little, you yeah. know, yep. a swing shut like that. Mm-hmm. So um, if I want to close it quick, sure, yeah. why not? Right, the little thing. Bob Terzola. Yeah. yeah, this is a another one of the legends. Wow. Uh, Bob's probably seventy eight or seventy seven, seventy eight years old now. Damn. Uh, Bob, don't hate me if I'm wrong, bro. I'm close, <laughs> but um, this is a this is a really cool piece that he did that I actually let Jared Neves borrow to do a review on. And yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, this is a one of the greatest custom makers ever. Um, yeah, and he's still pumping this stuff out. This is a 2020 model, but he, you know, he did it based on all materials that he had from 1990. You know, <laughs> when he first started making them. Um, so it's a 440 C blade mm-hmm. um, with an acid stone wash and a bronze uh, knurled thumb disc. Um, and then it's a liner lock with all titanium liners. And then he does a dovetailed lock bar insert inside wow. of there. So it's a screwless lock bar insert that he does. It's really That's cool. Crazy. 
um but i mean the level of how did he get that on there like shrink fitting or like how did he it's it's dovetailed think like furniture yeah like you know your drawers where two Mm -hmm. pieces one is cut one direction and one is cut another and gotcha got it got it and that's it so it's basically press fit is essentially Mm -hmm. um but i mean the level of detail you can even see like his look his logo in the bead and his his logo in the you know the hand done uh, emblem there and you know but yeah for this one like the action is this is on bearings i can Mm kind of shimmy it shut right um man it just basically all the stuff you're showing me is uh teaching me a lesson to build my podcast empire even faster so i can afford all this stuff too oh yeah because like i you know every time i see a custom on my instagram page i'm like oh that is so dope you know but it's crazy i actually have you know i'm a knife guy my table is full of knives right now when you go to my if i give you my phone and you look on my instagram i don't have hot chicks this is how you know i always tell people this you know you're a knife guy when you go to your instagram page and it isn't like hot chicks it's just (laughs) knives and all that that oh that you're one of you're one of us you know but i haven't bought a knife since this knife like i i I bought this because dylan mallory is a homie of mine uh, this is the artisan cutlery small archeo yes. i have not bought a knife since then so this is like i'm going on almost two years of not buying anything really which is absolutely insane but i create knife content every single day um i podcast only with edc but and that, you people. get sent you get sent so much i stuff. do i i get donations and your pass arounds and, and the all pass that stuff. that's that's what basically funds the channel but I think the podcasting, you know, going back to when you were talking about how you build brands, like, yeah, I need to do that. <laughs> Cause like, dude, I, if, if, if I were to tell you like the schedule that I've had, so I work six days a week at A-List CBD, shout out to A-List CBD. That's my family CBD shop. Right. <laughs> and as every waking moment, except for Sunday, Sunday, I actually hang out with the lady, you know, she like demands it. Right. And I do a podcast with her also on Sunday sure. or pay on Patreon. But in the past two weeks, I've done 10 podcasts in two weeks. That's 10 hours, bro, of talking to people. Sure. And I posted every single day on YouTube. I posted every single day on Instagram, on TikTok and Twitter. And I'm not reusing content. I That's do multiple. Lot. Yeah. But I'm not growing. I'm, glad as... I'm not. I'm not you. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the, the thing is, is like, I think that my favorite hobby is creating yeah. content. It just well, happens you know that I'm an EDC guy. That's um, right. But what I'm saying is like, I'm not blowing up yet like complex and slicey even though like they're i'm homies with them you know it's like they're they're always like man i don't know why you're not bigger bro like no one is doing this like you're kind of different you know like yeah i gotta build that brand man and um but podcasting is my favorite thing man you know and that's why i'm really happy that you did this because i've never had someone with as much um I can't say knowledge, but I've never had a custom guy on here before, you know, like my introduction to people that collected customs was like Jim Skelton and stuff like 40 years ago. Uh, I I don't really watch him that much anymore, but that's how I got introduced to it. Um, You know, like I'm in a a group chat with, with some of these knife YouTube elites kind of, you know what I mean? (laughs) Like like Doc Frunky and, and yeah. all these guys, Shabazz and them. And, you know, they, they, they talk about knives in a similar fashion that you do. And I, I, I kind of just nod along. Like, I don't understand it, but I'm like sure. soaking in the information, man. Um, what do you, what would you suggest? Uh, a per, like, let's say a person is coming into some money. They've been collecting productions for a while, right? And they, they don't wanna, even like, have to come into money, right? Well, like, well I mean, like, let's, let's say, say like they, they have, them. Yeah, they, right. They, they let's, sold say, their production. let's say they sold like maybe five, three hundred dollar yeah. knives, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. If I want to get into something, what is like a good maker to look at? Sure. Right? Yeah, no, that's great. And I always kind of I personally for people that are just getting into it, I, message me on Instagram too. Ah, I'm happy to talk you to go. you um, and give you some insights. Um, I kind of try and break them down into into I kind of have a tier one, tier two, tier three kind of. <laughs> you know, thing. And, and, yeah. but I don't want them to know what tier there is, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, but no, honestly, um, what I can say is this, I can say that there are customs out there for people who are looking between um, 500 and, and $10,000, um, $500, $500. 
Sure, five, six hundred. No way. Bucks. Absolutely, all the way, all the way up. Um, because yeah, my kidney instance, is at least worth that. Yeah, right. I could get maybe a few. No. <laughs> So I don't have, I, I did sell one of them that I would have loved to have shown you. And it's from Simon Strikers. He's about to do a lottery. Okay. He's going to do a lottery on his Facebook this week, which people won't see the podcast for a while. So, but that's okay. Um, yeah. But just for instance, he's a maker out of Belgium who's a hobbyist. Mm-hmm. He, you know, he's not even a part-time ma- maker, but his work is outstanding. Standing, wow. and and his table price on a piece that I recently had from him was 550 560 US dollars, Damn. and um, and it was bar none. It, it was excellent. It was it was like the ultimate sleesh Bowie on steroids, but way better. So um, you know, and people would dig it. So that's that's an option for 550 560 bucks. And I have you know, like goosebumps right now. That's how I know I'm a knife guy because when you said like yeah. the price, and I'm like, man, that's kind of feasible for me. I'm about to get my sure. tax refund, you yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> so there's yeah. another there are another couple that I would highly suggest too that you that you look after. What's the first um, maker's name again? Um Simon Strikers. S I M E N. S T R Y K E R S, and wow. you can find them at, at Strikers. It's like Strikers Knives or something on on Instagram. Okay, cool. cool. Um, he actually just did a a, a, a production piece with We, mm-hmm. also. But uh, but anyway, he only makes like six to ten knives a year, though. Oh, so it's man. you know, so, so you gotta you win know, that lotto. You gotta win that lotto, yep, yep. Uh, but not a lot of people know about him yet. Here's here's one that I would highly recommend. His mm-hmm. work isn't super cheap, but you know, starts at about eight hundred dollars and goes mm-hmm. up to, you know, up from there. But eight hundred to thirteen hundred is is a great window for him, um, and that's um, Steve Dump, uh, Dumpchis, um, mm-hmm. and Steve is from uh, Nova Blades. Mm-hmm. SDK Nova Blades. You can follow him on Instagram and check his work out. This is the Anthem. I'm sorry, he's building me an Anthem. This is a napalm model, mm-hmm. um, and it's got a hand rub satin on it. He did uh, some beautiful Zerkutai uh, pocket clip and hand turned Zerkutai thumb studs, um, and his millwork is great. The blade shape is hyper functional. It's kind of got Damn. an armor piercing style tip on it, but very Sabenza kind of shaped blade, mm-hmm. but with a much steeper hollow that gets very thin behind the edge. And the action's stupid wow. good. Wow. Yeah. Stupid, stupid good that action. So cool. So um, yeah, no, this is this is fabulous. The profile's awesome, the price is right. And What's like the size I said, on the blade on that. What's the length on the blade for that? Um, this one's probably about a two point eight inch blade. That's um, oh my god, that's like the specs that I want, bro. <laughs> like three yeah. inch or under is like what well, I this, like of here. He'll build you one of these for eight hundred bucks. Hit him up. Damn. Um, you know, it'd be a basic configuration, but fine, whatever. Yeah. What's the steel uh, on on the basic model? Uh, he uses CPM one fifty four or okay, you know, XHP or whatever, uh, which okay. is what most most custom guys are using anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um this one i think is cpm 150 no this one might be xhp i don't remember but <laughs> it's one of those two and uh but let me tell you there's zero lock stick this is mm-hmm. the the lockup is rock freaking solid the detent is so early on it yeah. and i mean the studs are awesome yeah, so yeah you great. just can't go you can't go can't go wrong with his stuff man uh, it's, it's so good that i i hit him right back up and i'm like let's do another one so i'm building Damn. uh an anthem that i'm gonna call obi-wan kenobi and it's, <laughs> it, because it's got um Keno- chad nichols kenobi timascus oh, parts snap. on it yeah that's yeah crazy. so figure and it's got a little star wars kind of theme going on it'll be cool another one is uh now this is about a, a you know thousand twelve hundred bucks Mm -hmm. um but this is an absolute freaking master of a maker these days this is a Mm -hmm. kevin foster okay um and kevin foster is another u.s maker out of california Uh, this is his bowie narwhal wow is is the is this model he is an abalone beautiful abalone pivot i see that right there yep and he was taught he was taught to make knives by tom mayo Oh, and you snap. can feel a lot of the similarities in the work. Oh man, it's crispy and awesome. Um, and I just got this from the California Custom Knife Show, for instance. 
but that would be a good one. Another one is Enrique Pena. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah. So this is an Enrique Pena Mula Summer. Mm -hmm. um, this is a bolster lock, meaning yeah. that it, you know the micarta scale mm -hmm. acts as the over travel stop with just a little bit of the lock bar exposed, and this nice. thing's banging. Yeah, that looks super dope. So, and this is uh, right at about the nine hundred dollar price point in this configuration. So they're probably you know, 850 to 950, 850, 975 range for his work. Yeah. So, and, and I mean, you were asking about something that was more drop shut. And I mean, this thing yeah, falls shut under crazy. its, this is under its own weight. This will fall shut for sure. Yeah. 500 to 800, like kind of below the $1,000 price point, I think would be pretty feasible for at least like some of the content creators that I know. You know what I mean? Because they're like spending two hundred dollars here, two hundred dollars there, flipping it, doing all that stuff. Um, you know, I haven't bought anything. And then, see, here's the thing though with me, right? It's like all my money that I save <clears throat> basically goes to upgrading things for the channel. Sure. So whether whether it's audio equipment for the podcast or or a new phone to film stuff <laughs> or another GoPro or something like that, it's like all the all my money goes to that. But definitely, um, I'm starting to save some cash with yeah. you know, people uh, donating to the Patreon and things like that, that I think that it would be a treat for the people to watch who watch me um, if I were to pick up something like what you just showed. This right will, uh, this will, I change, didn't know that change. they go that low. This will uh, change I didn't know. your world. I'm yeah. telling you right now, it, it's mm -hmm. a, it's a whole nother, a whole nother creature. And it's not just a whole nother creature because the quality it's a yeah. whole nother because production quality, high end production from Riyadh and, yeah. and, and we and you name it, it's gotten very good. Yeah, um, definitely. So no, has, yeah. no doubt about that. Th these still are next level in terms of fitment, finish, the mm -hmm. details, the minutia of the details. If you find enjoyment in those things, this will open a whole new Pandora's box for you. Wow. But the other thing is the people. That's yeah. the best part. And I know you're friends with a lot of production manufacturers and stuff, right? when you work one-on-one -on -one with somebody and, and you're feeding off of them and they're feeding off of you and you become buddies and in a whole different way. And you know that you're directly impacting that person's livelihood mm -hmm. as well. And everything you say about them is meaningful and, you know, and you name it, it's, there's a whole new level of investment outside of just the, the object. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. It's like, you know, forming bonds with people. Um, that's, pretty much like what i like the most man um after doing this podcast uh people who watch this channel just started to trust me more like it became more about like i don't even care what he's checking out i'm gonna just go in there like i'll talk about my life you know my girls on here sometimes they like they they know the day that i got engaged they were like oh that's so funny um ray's girl proposed to him you know what i mean like <laughs> So, you know, like I, I, I literally am very personal on this channel. So forming bonds with people, man, that, that's definitely like one of my favorite things right now. What is that? So, you know, there, God, every person here I'm talking about, I've formed a bond <laughs> with over the years. And this is another one. Ray Laconico is someone I consider a, a great friend. Mm -hmm. um, Ray, Ray created MBK with Sanford Owen. Yes, yes. You probably know. The old um, guard but, just popped up uh, that's right. a couple of days ago. And uh, I've been seeing so, that a lot. This is a Ray, Ray and I, I, you know, talk and hang out. I give him a little feedback now and then and talk about ideas and spitball mm -hmm. with him and stuff. And um, he's an OG man. I mean, he's he's doing such great work and has for a long time. This is a custom Rosalinda. This mm -hmm. is named after his his mom. Yeah. Um, and uh, this will be a MBK model later in 2021. Yeah. But he's only made two customs. He made one for me, and he made the one that's the prototype for MBK. Wow. And um, and he Dang, just made me this, dude. and it is so good. It's wow. a carbon fiber inset lock. So you know, it's just carbon fiber scales with an mm -hmm. inset titanium lock. He inlaid carbon fiber in that pocket clip, and uh, yeah, and the, here's the, the he's one of the guys I bring up too, dude. You can get. Follow Ray Laconico, watch him as he builds products mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you know, send him a DM when he, when you see something that he's building that you like and his stuff is 750 to 750 to 900 bucks. Yeah. For his customs. Mm -hmm. That seems pretty reasonable. That that's like, basically I do Patreon for a couple of months and then I could yeah. 
grab something and and fucking talk about it on the channel and people will know like the reason why it's even here is like they help you know with that That that's kind of one thing that um that that's been few because like I, i've never really made money on this channel i pour, like i told you what my schedule is like and my schedule has been that way for the at least two years and a half now. And I wasn't yeah. making money at all until I started the Patreon with Kelly maybe two months ago. Sure. <laughs> so, sure. you know, like I didn't even, I didn't even turn on ads until like last month because um, I, I realized that when I do live chats, people were like, Hey, how come I can't send you money with the super chats, you know? Yeah. And I, I never set it up. You have to do ads in order to do that. But yeah, sure. man, like for sure. Like I would rather, get something that I could show on the channel. It's like, I don't, I don't, I don't do shit. I'm not like a, you know, I don't go out. I mean, I mean, who the fuck goes out now, right? <laughs> like, Nobody. You know what I mean? Uh, how has that been for you, by the way? Um, you said that you work from home a lot right now. And um, business is a booming, buddy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I mean, He's I, like, I've got seven customs coming my way. <laughs> this no, is- <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm just saying this has been a good year. Just, I mean, it's been a bad year all around for everybody, I think. And w- listen, there's no part of me that doesn't feel for everything that's going on and trying to, knowing I'm going to become a dad for the first time and, and this environment and the state of the world is mm-hmm. uh, is scary to be yeah. to be frank um exciting also of course <laughs> um but there's a bit of it that's a little scary and you know my wife uh, works in the icu of a couple hospitals and Dang. you know she's been dealing with this stuff you know from the onset and uh and it's not getting better it's getting worse so it's you know it's a little scary um but with that being said for me um i'm in the booze business man i sell yeah. smiles you know <laughs> at the end of the day i sell smiles to people and um and business has been great and i'm really fortunate and uh you know uh, everybody's drinking everybody's at home um I, the only thing that really sucks about it is as well as my customer is is doing and retail and grocery and stuff are doing the, our restaurants are are Not hurting good. it's they're hurting more than anybody i think mm-hmm. out there and um i have so many friends in that community um and have spent so many years working with them in that in that side of the business so you know um shameless plug please continue to support your local restaurants in every way you can those people need their jobs too and it means a lot to them um so continue to support them but yeah uh, um, yeah, no I've, i've been i've been lucky nice man yeah kelly and i for three months, I don't think we, I don't think I left my apartment. <clears throat> so yeah. I'm in New York City. I'm in the Bronx, one of the yeah. worst areas uh, yeah. due to the pandemic. And like, I was just getting groceries delivered. The only time yeah. I ever went outside was to throw away garbage, right? Sure. So, yeah. so I, um, after a little bit, you know, it got less scary. I think in March, everyone was like freaked the fuck out, right? Yeah. Well, less nobody scary. knew what was going on. Right. It got less scary. And like, you know, if, you, if you're if you fit, like if you you might like have a better chance and stuff. And like Kelly and I are like, we work out regularly. You know, Kelly's a personal trainer. So like I had to get fit as fuck to just even keep up with that. So um, I ended up going back to work, right? You know, to my CBD shop. And I got to take a train to to get there like it's over an hour train ride two trains and stuff but anyway like we started going out yep. and i was really curious to see i'm listening i'm turning a fan on no it's cool it's cool i was really curious to see like what nyc looked like you know what i mean so i told my girl i was like yo let's go on a date right we went to k-town <laughs> went to look for some korean barbecue and yep. I, I'm going to just tell you right now, like, so K-Town in, in, in Manhattan is like one block. It's like 32nd okay. Street and 6th Avenue. It starts from there. I think it's 32nd. Yeah. They, they close it all off. Like you can't drive through there. And there are just tents outside for people to sit in. There's like DJs outside, like bumping music. And, <laughs> and you know, it, was, it felt like New York City again. Sure. You know what I'm saying? And then on my yeah. Instagram, I, I was like, you know, like New York City is, is surviving. You know what I mean? So we, we did go there. And I was happy to see that um, because it certainly like even though I live here, like I want the country to open up, man, which is kind of like a very unpopular opinion in some yep. circles here. Uh, I want the country to open up. I think people should young people should take the risk to be out there and just don't hug your fucking parents. You know what I mean? That's basically like what what I feel. But um. 
Yeah, man. Because I, I see like the poverty like growing. Since I take the train, more people are begging for money and stuff like oh, that. Yeah. It's like crazy, bro. It's so crazy right now. So uh, I'm de- I was definitely happy to see some semblance of normalcy a little bit, at least in that pocket of time when I was out with my girl, you know? It hasn't, it hasn't affected the knife world so much as I thought it would. Um, people yeah. still feel like, I think, you know, booze and, and blades are inherently, I think, necessary for <laughs> people, people like us to stay happy. Yeah. So, you know, I think um, we're, we're, <laughs> we're just in, I can't call it, it's not recession proof. It's, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's res- but it's highly resistant. Yeah um the the some of the things that people don't want to give up they won't and um you know but you you brought up a point earlier about Mm -hmm. getting into the custom arena and finding good values and stuff like that and i i did a video with jared neves on it and i Mm -hmm. i do talk about it a lot on my instagram live streams and stuff yeah i wanted to talk about that keep going though but we'll talk about your lives in a little bit um so you know wanted to you know, what I try and get across to people is there are makers. I just named a few that mm-hmm. were American makers. Mm-hmm. Um, there are quite a few that are um, the other area that's amazing is South Africa for, mm-hmm. for values and customs. I've heard that for sure. Because our dollar goes a lot further because the Rand is just it. If you live in South Africa and I've been there a few times and it's one of my favorite places. But um, if you live in South Africa and you're making U.S. dollars and living there, mm-hmm. you can live like a king. And yeah. it's just the reality of it. So these makers that are making American uh, U.S. dollars don't have to charge nearly as much. And they could be very competitive in, in the space because, mm-hmm. you know, they they only have to charge seven hundred dollars when someone in the U.S. might have to charge fourteen hundred dollars for the same thing. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? And yeah. And, yeah, uh, yeah. So another group that I would highly recommend people want to go after. The, number one would be Andre Thorburn. Okay. He's kind of like the Tom Mayo of, of South Africa. Um, he's really the pioneer of mastering the modern detent, mm-hmm. um, particularly for flippers. So he does the best, some of the best flippers ever made, um, wow. in my opinion. And they're, they're done beautifully. He uses uh, great steel, whether it's really well treated, like properly he treated M390 um you know and really good xhp and and damas steel and stuff like that um his embellishments his wife does a lot of the custom embellishments on like zirconium bolsters wow. and all of the stuff is like it starts at maybe 650 you yeah, know that's you pretty know. good man and uh and you know his average price is probably 800 bucks for yeah. you know top of the line top of the line work so and you can find a lot of his stuff is at blade gallery they always mm-hmm. have a whole bunch of it Trevor yeah. Berger, Trevor Berger. Would Blade be Gallery one. is what, like a website or? Yeah, Blade Gallery is a website um, that carries knives. Um, yeah, like custom stuff or? They do all the above. Um, you know, they, they do productions, they do customs, mm-hmm. but they carry a lot of South African stuff. Yeah. And they carry a ton of Andre Thorburn. They carry a lot of Trevor Berger. Um, mm-hmm. I looked earlier today, there was two beautiful Trevor Berger front flippers. They're not exactly easy to find. They're mm-hmm. some of the best front flippers. I think um, he's, I would argue he's the king of the front flipper. I think yeah. the best front flippers wow. ever, ever made um, are, are burgers. Um, and he does, uh, he has two of them up there for sale. They're maybe seven, 680 to 780 bucks. And they have wow. carbon fiber inlays and he does the best inlay work on any knife I've ever seen. They're seamless inlays. You can't, you can't even put a nail in there if you tried. And um, they're just that good. So go to Blade Crazy. Gallery uh, if, if you're looking for some cool stuff there. So there's a lot of options for people. Mm-hmm. Stel- and, and the way I was able to do it and the way I still am able to do it when I see something I really, really want is I know I've got X amount of dollars <clears throat> invested in, in my stuff, right? Um, and I know what each value of, of these things are, you know, approximately on secondary market. And, uh, and I know that if I want something new, that there are things in here, I have plenty that I'm not carrying them all. Mm-hmm. And, um, and those that I find I'm carrying most often are ones that I will not let go. Right, I'm enjoying right. carrying them. I'm enjoying using them and they're going to stay things that, you know, 
lives like this that I've built a, mm -hmm. a wonderful friendship and relationship with a maker that I worked hand in hand on it. I probably will never see that go because I like carrying it and using it and so on. Right. But there are some like I have this one for sale right now on Instagram. This is a Jonas Iglesias lichen. And while I think yeah. he's a top this he's a top three maker and this knife is perfect in every way. It's brand new. It's, you know, I haven't carried it or anything, but I mean, it has the, oh, it's, wow. it's unbelievable. Flipper detent is flawless. It's just a flawless build of titanium and zirconium. How much is and, it? Uh, but I know that right now I've got so many things in the works that I moved a couple. I moved a Jared Price mini Bowie. Uh, this is for sale. And I moved, uh, um, this one is about to go out the door. This is another Tom, uh, Tom Mayo covert. Wow. Which is, uh, whoops, which is, uh, I'm kind of hindered. I got a box in the way, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. So, you know, this one for instance is on its way out because I've got another Tom Mayo coming in. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it, it's a revolving door, not a revolving door. That's not fair. It's, it's an evolving situation and evolving mm. hobby and collection for me um but a lot of these, how do you yeah, get how do you I, sell it like do you just announce it on instagram are you on forums uh, or sure so um i have created a couple of chat groups one of which i created with a buddy of mine another one was kind of my idea one of them is um i call it second city blades and mm -hmm. Second City refers to Chicago. And so yeah, all the people that that's where people in, learn improv, too. There's like a troop there. That's, that's true. Yeah, I pay attention to all the comedians. That's how I know that. There you go. <laughs> Second City. That's right. So, um, but I wanted to get all the local makers and local collectors like myself, like-minded individuals, as well as makers that I think are awesome, get them in a group and all of us get along and it's hysterical. We chat all day long about Wow. whatever it's not always knives a lot of times it is a lot of times it's not and um but between that community of people and then another group that i've got going there's probably you know 20 to what 20 to 30 people in each group and those then have a big outreach from there and mm -hmm. if we want to move something i'll offer it for a very good like buddy buddy you know buddy price, price to someone yeah. in the group otherwise <laughs> i'll say if anybody knows anybody that's looking let me know Yep. And if that doesn't work, then, you know, I'll hit up, I'll post it up on Facebook in the makers group, for instance, most of these makers have very active group Smart. communities. Smart. Um, and you'll post it in that group. Um, and then I'll also just post it in Instagram because I, you know, the, my content, I try and, you know, put daily, you know, daily pics of stuff mm -hmm. up there and, and, or live streams that I do. And yeah. Um, and that all helps, right? To yeah. So people can see and experience these, even though they're not in their own hands. Mm -hmm. And maybe someone's in a position like you, you know, who is willing to move a couple of production pieces or yeah. has saved up some shekels yeah. and uh, and is yeah. is ready to take a plunge, um, and uh, and may buy one of those pieces from me who's seen it mm -hmm. previously on my Instagram. Yeah, I was gonna ask. Um, you've been doing lives. Uh, that's actually how we you know, linked up was, you know, um, <clears throat> MC was like, Hey man, you should have spirited blades on your podcast. And then I saw you put up an Instagram live. I got notified cause I was following you and I just hopped on. And I, I mean, it, it's always shocking to me when someone is like, Oh, I really like what you're doing. And I, cause I feel like no one watches me. <laughs> like, you know what I, mean? I, I do. I, I enjoy <laughs> watching your stuff. So yeah, absolutely. I feel like no one does. Um, but yeah, like, um, what was your decision in doing that to kind of just have a bigger presence uh, in on social media on Instagram? I wanted example, to or? I wanted I like to share my joy in things. Yeah. Um, and I think that sharing my enjoyment out of it and and having a discussion with people is fun. Mm -hmm. And yes. um, and so you know, to me, um, if I unbox something, I want to unbox it and have other people enjoy it that in, that would otherwise yeah. not have an opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. or maybe I, I like doing, you know, deep dives for makers where I'm just yeah. individually talking about a specific maker. I did one on David Mosier. I did one on Tom Mayo. I did one on Jonas Iglesias, mm -hmm. for instance, so far where I just dive into who they are a little bit, why yeah. I really dig them, what the, what makes them special and, and, and why, 
Um, and maybe I did one on Bob. If I haven't done one on Bob Terzola, I'll do that next. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, and then, you know, besides that, so I'll do them for unboxings a lot. I'll do them yep. for maker deep dives. Sometimes it's just knife chats with buddies where I would just mm -hmm. want to invite someone in um, and have a talk about one subject matter or another. Maybe it's, you know, what do you prefer as a pivot mechanism or do you prefer, you know, uh, carbon fiber, micarta or titanium and just mm -hmm. have a 30 minute to an hour discussion yeah. sh shooting the shit about yep. any of those things. That's basically uh, what this is. Like this podcast is like me, a uh, newcomer, but like yeah. just as passionate about the hobby, talking to people that have been in it longer than me. And I just like, like this, this episode is basically a, like a master class for me right now. <laughs> like I learned like so much, like how to just uh, look at things a little more objectively. I mean, that's kind of how I've been doing it is like, I'm not, but I haven't been buying everything because I kind of, I kind of want to save up. Um, the last time I was on the metal complex, he was like, yo, you should get a hinderer. But now that now with the information I got from you, I'm like, maybe I'm not going to do that. Maybe I'm going to save more and get one of these things that you mentioned, because I, I, I look, man, like I've never had one in my hand. The closest thing I've gotten is the ZT version uh, of the 560. Yeah. And um, I think Slicey Dicey is sending me an XM18. Um, but other than that, like I, I, I just haven't I haven't dove in yet. To like that sort of range like i've gone to check out crks before um riots things like that but i i, I just haven't dove in myself but what you well, i'll send you today, i'll send you i'll send you uh you know i'll send you oh my god don't do that <laughs> like, and, you can, <laughs> and you can check it out man yeah the next time you see me like uh, your next next post on instagram you see me it's like i got like a surgical scar and then i have like a new custom <laughs> No, no, for sure. I would love that. Uh, I, you know, I'll, uh, I'll make a bunch of content on it. That's what I love doing, dude. I love connecting with knife people sure. and just like making content and stuff. Yeah. Like I, I do TikTok like three times a day of knife stuff. That's hard, bro, because TikTok takes your stuff down. Like yeah. I can't, I can't show the tip of the knife. So what right. I do is oh, I'll talk about it like this. And then I'll, at the end, I'll just show a picture of it open. That's crazy. You know, 15 second I'm, clip. I'm not into it enough to, I'm not savvy enough to know that stuff. All I yeah. do know is wh whatever I figure out, I'll yeah. do just so that I can share some of the joy with the rest of the community that might not see these. Because yeah. these are all one of a kind. Right, everything, right. Everything have you podcast, have, before I forget, have you post podcasted before with other people? Or is this like the first one you've ever done? Um, I do. I pop on to the Knife Junkie Thursday Night Knives. Bob DeMarco. I just had, so he had me on the Knife Junkie and I just had him on last week. Um, I haven't released the episode yet, but I think he talked about you. Were you the one that mentioned like uh, Birdvis Knives or something? It was like. I've turned him on to a number of people. Ed, Ed yeah. Cope is one I turned him on to mm -hmm. and he did an interview with. Matt Christensen, I turned him on yeah. to and he did an interview with. Yeah. Nick, Nick um, also from yeah. Birdvis and he did an interview yes, with, yes, he, with that's him. What he mentioned. Yeah. So there, there's been quite a few and yeah, I mean, I, I try and, you know, help turn, turn people on to mm -hmm. this world of makers, the, the, the men behind the masks yeah. of, of our favorite productions and stuff like that, because a lot, that's what these are. I mean, Enrique Pena does his whole X series line with Riyadh. Uh, yeah. Kevin Foster does his anchovy and, and others with Alliance Designs. Uh, Christensen does his with a bangerine with Alliance Designs. He did a Spectre with CKF and a number of others. Bang you know what I mean? That's Hook, bro. That's Rufio right there. My girl is always like, my girl is always like, so we, we were, you know, I'm a huge nerd. Everybody knows that. And like, I, I, we used to go to Comic Con every year and we would dress up, right? So last year I got to choose. And my girl was like, you have no fucking idea what you're in for next year. I'm going to fucking dress you up as Rufio and I'm going to be Tinkerbell. <laughs> that's you you'd make a perfect Rufio, of course bro. i'm filipino bro like that dude could be my cousin man <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but she was like she's always mad funny but um yeah man uh back to bob like such a cool dude um yeah do you think that long form video content um i always say this uh it, it's blown up in every other space Right. And I feel like in the knife community, it's starting to take off a little bit more. Now, there are bigger podcasts like the Knife Nut, uh, the Knife Nuts. Right. That's a huge. I one. Listen, yeah, I listen Bond. to them in my car whenever I'm stuck in traffic. Yeah. But I think like long form video 
content is not as heavy. I think Bob and I are one of the few that are doing. It. I think Alex's Knife Box is another dude that's doing that. Carlos CDC is a smaller channel that's doing it. But I think it's going to play like a really big role in the evolution of the community. Um, for example, you know, talking with you, yeah, we've introduced all these people that have never heard of these makers. And they've always thought that customs were this unattainable thing. But then I never even knew that a custom could cost 500, 600, 700 bucks. I always thought it was like 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 and more. I never knew, dude. Yeah, no, there, you know? there's, a, there's definitely a way in. There's a way yeah. in for, for everybody out there. And I think that's a message I'd love to continue to get across to people is, right. is the fact that, you know, there's a way to, yes, you are supporting these makers and doing their production runs and they love doing production runs because the, it gets their work in the hands of a lot more people. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the things that I've realized the most is I still love productions, yeah. um, but I just don't get the same joy out of them because I know that the mark of the maker, which is another podcast on you should listen to if you don't market the maker is pretty cool with a uh, lot of great where is that where can where can people find that on uh, apple uh, oh, it's it's audio just, only audio only i think it's an audio only okay if i'm not mistaken um that's how i listen to it but you know that's a bunch of makers like jason birch is on there and stuff like that and and they'll talk they'll bring guys like bill rupel or or you know other makers on and and do interviews and stuff with them but there is a there is a soul in this product, you know. Yeah. There, there there is a soul in 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 this David Mosier, right? It just it just whoops. Oh, shit. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's, okay. Uh, Scared, this is, bro. This is, this is a user, and it just hit my whiskey glass. So it's, <laughs> if if this takes a whiskey bath, it's believe me, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> um, but you know, there there is there's there's a soul in in this. Um, mm -hmm. His grind work, his hand work, you can feel it. it. It's, you know what I mean? There, there, you can just, I can feel it. And yeah. I know, I know that Moser feels like Moser. I know that um, every time I pick up a Tom Mayo custom, it feels like his hand work. Like yeah. the lock bar disengages the same on every Mayo I've owned. It deploys similarly. It has the same Teflon feeling, beautiful, silky action. Yeah. And, and they just, they feel like, that person one mm -hmm. and um ultimately become friends with them and then it becomes even more important so yeah it's a fun world and um i highly recommend everybody who can sell a few productions and get into it yeah i mean look man um thank you for being on dude it was absolutely amazing it was a blast i I have never said wow and that's sick more than in this podcast. You showing me all this stuff. I absolutely I usually talk way more than this. Um I think I think when I talk to Bob, uh when I talked to Bob DeMarco, I watched a bunch of his episodes, right? And yeah. I was like, man, he's really patient with how he interjects when to come in and and you know, I try to employ that now with these new um episodes that uh that I'm doing, but with you, man, it was so easy because you were showing me all these knives. This is the most that a guest and I have talked about knives on this podcast, I think, ever. Because oh, really? The slogan of this podcast is we talk about knives sometimes, you know what I mean? Like, literally, not on purpose, not on purpose, yeah, right? Funny. Because we can um, talk about other stuff, whatever. No, no, you want. And, we, and we have, we have. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, is like, I like to kind of humanize the people that I'm talking to. It's mostly like knife content creators. You know, some people have done face reveals on here. They've never shown their face on camera, things like that. And like the people that, you know, hundreds, thousands of people are tuning into every day, every week, like they don't really know them aside from like hands talking about a knife. You know? uh, yeah. Like Metal Complex hopped on and people were like, yo, is he like a Wahlberg? You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> Yeah, and, he, uh, he looks like a Wahlberg. Dude, he's become such a homie of mine because looking at him, you know, like we got to talking about video games and I was like, you know, like, what do you play? And he's like, you know, in my head, I'm like, OK, he's like kind of a like a meathead kind of dude. He plays Call of Duty or some kind of first person shooter. And he was like, oh, I play Diablo three and Skyrim. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, he's just like me. World of, World of Warcraft. Yeah, World of Diablo Warcraft. 3. Exactly. 
<laughs> so it's 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 things like that. Those are the, ga- those are the games I played. Le- dude, League, of Le- so awesome. League of dude, Legends, League of dude, Legends. World of I'm Warcraft. gonna tell you the craziest. I don't anymore. I, I, I've I, told I, this I story on the podcast before. So a homie of mine, shout out to Guy. He used to work at Riot Games. Okay, um, he was a uh, which created League of, Le- League of yes. Legends. Yes. Okay? Yep. So when Riot Games wasn't that big. Yeah, he was like, bro, he used to live here. He used to live in Jersey. He was like, bro, I'm going to move to I forgot what state they were in at the time. You're in Jersey. I'm in New York City. Oh, yeah. I live, okay. I live in the Bronx. So he was like, I'm moving. And he had like a cushy job here where he was like make, making six figures, like making a lot of money. He's like, I'm going to work in the gaming industry. And I'm like, what? You're crazy. And he went to Riot Games. He got really big there. And he, so I was a DJ and a music producer for like 10 years of my life. Now he's probably making more than just his normal six figures now. Oh, dude. He works for Skydance now, which is the people that produce Gemini Man, the new Terminator. Uh, They produced um, just a bunch of games, you know? Um, But yeah, like he got me a gig, okay, uh, that paid three grand an hour. And I had to DJ their after party. But during the day, he gave me passes to go to PAX East in Boston, which is a game mm-hmm. convention. Yep. And I had to play League of Legends in front of like hundreds of people. And I, that that, I we won. We won. I, 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 we did a, what was that called? An Aram where it's like you randomly. Yeah. The, yeah. I, I got a Mumu, the mummy guy. Yeah, and yeah. like I got a few cool moments, but. Yo, it was one of the best experiences of my yeah, life. Yeah, he's got a, he's got a he's got a really good ultimate Amumu. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the the group one you can you can you can suck in a the lot of people. Is, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, that's so cool, man, that you play that. Yeah, I don't I don't game as much as I do. I I play like Monster Hunter. That's really the only thing I play. Um, sure. My my video game is this, like doing YouTube, yeah. doing content and stuff. Uh, Mine what, is my 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 work. Yeah. My my work. My wife is my best friend, and. Yep. Uh, and soon, you know, soon to be dad. And, yeah, uh, yeah, the baby. And then, boy. and then, you know, the knife community at large, and um, you know, chatting with everybody and friends of the makers and all that. This dude, by the way, the yeah, one yeah, that yeah. I, I think you should probably look at doing a build with, because mm-hmm. I'm sure he would work well with you. Yeah, um, is a Jersey boy. Oh, word! What's his name? He, he's right across. He's he's very close by, I think, to where you're at. Um, but his name is Steve. Dumpchus, Steve, Steve Dumpchus. Dumpchus. Okay. Dumpchus with a D, D U M C H U S. And he is S D K Nova Blades. S D K Nova Blades, got it. And uh, yeah, because you could probably check out a shop. You could do a yeah. shop tour with your content. Sick, you could, dude. you know, and he uh, he does live videos almost daily of him mm-hmm. working in his shop. Yeah. Um, for content, he mm-hmm. so he, he's uh. He's got a little Jersey boy hardness about him. Yeah, Great yeah, yeah. Guy. I lived in Jersey uh, for a little bit. So, yeah. so uh, is, is there anything you want to tell the people on this episode before we head on that? We've like killed an hour like so quick. Um, and is there anything that you want to just like say to the people before we head out? Um, you know, I'll, I'll say just two quick things. One is uh, if you don't follow me on Instagram, <laughs> I, I think. I just passed about 1,500, yeah. I think, Spirited followers. Whiskey. Uh, Spirited Blades, right? Well, I'm both. Spirited yeah. Whiskey is, I, I'm not as active in, but I will send, you know, put up some booze, booze-based booze stuff mm-hmm. yeah. um, and life kind of things. Spirited Blades is my knife-related uh, content or shooting and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but so do that for one, I guess. Um, for two, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to put something together to, bring manufacturing of knives back to the usa from china nice. uh, a little bit nice. i'm for I've that got, i am for that i've got actually. some ideas um that i've been talking to a few guys about so you know uh, if you have ideas about that hit me up and let me know but most most of all treat each other well you know treat yeah. your neighbor with respect treat people with dignity um and uh and you know follow the golden rule we need it now more than ever yeah. And, uh, you know, support your local restaurants. Um, they, <laughs> yeah, they, they need, they need your help and, uh, just, yeah, be good to each other. And especially yeah. during these times. Yeah, man. Be good to yourself though. You know, I always say this and, it's, and to yourself, be good, yeah, to, yourself be good to yourself. That's what I, I usually say that I got that from comedian Theo Vaughn. Like, and I always say this cringy ass thing 
where I say that kindness is my religion, happiness is my currency, which is so cringy, but that's how I live my life, dude. Like I've yeah. been ri- I've been richer than where I am at now, but yeah. I am so happy where I'm at now though. Like I'm not stressing as much and it's I think it's just cuz I am I employ that. You know what I mean? Just be kind, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's you know what? That's the best thing that we can do for each other and for ourselves. And um yeah, preach on, man. I think that's a good way. That's a good way to live. And um, I think that the knife community at large, most most of the people that I've ever met in this community are very so much cool. that way, so and cool. uh, and are very very giving people, and um, um, are more than willing to share their energy and their money and just everything. So you know, be be continue to be active participants <laughs> and treat treat each other and treat yourself well. That's that's all there is dude thank you for doing this man i truly appreciate it um everyone follow spirited blade spirited whiskey on instagram this is your boy in the nyc it's me ray and this is the edcc saying peace yo don't forget to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell icon so we can squat up in the comments